So today I'm coming at you with another book that I flew through. Um, probably because it's so small. Like, it's a little thick, but it's, it's so small formatting-wise. But I really enjoyed this book, and I'm really looking forward to telling you about it. I hope that you'll decide to pick it up for yourself. So just for a brief overview, we follow Sonia, who in true YA fashion thinks that she's super average, and then she turns out to be exceptional. The event where she discovers that she's special is that her and some of the other, I guess kind of urchin kids, they're part of a, a gang on the streets but it's all made up of children. <laughs> they have been, for the past couple years, harassing the mages when it comes time for this thing called the Purge, which isn't like the Purge probably most of you are thinking of, but it's still not great. So, in an act of defiance that usually is just a small little thing nobody even really cares about, uh, the kids go throw rocks at the mages. And the reason why it's not a big deal is the mages have shields. But Sonya finds out that she's special when sh her rock goes through the shield and knocks out one of the magicians. That then sparks the real action in the book where she's trying to run away. Two, while she's running away in a panic because she already doesn't trust them, someone gets injured. So that makes her even more distrusting of them. But instead of just focusing on her, we also see the point of view of the mages where we kind of see it explained that when somebody has magical powers that are not properly taken care of and or contained, that can really be a danger, not just to them, but to everyone around them. So they're working about as hard to find her as she's working to stay away from them. I really liked how Canavan handled the narration. I think it's really important to the story to not only see Sonya's side, but to also see Brothen, the mage that we follow. Uh, so most of the book is focused on the two of them and kind of their perspective, their adventures. But we also see uh, a little bit from Daniel, who is another mage, and a little bit from, I've been pronouncing it Saren, but who is one of Sonya's friends. I think that it's important to have all those different kind of narrative focuses. Uh, but something that is really helpful, especially because this novel, uh, this novel does seem very YA focused, is that at least we have the common thread of all the narrative styles being the same. It's always third person past tense. It never feels too different to swap from following one character to following another character. All right, so this is probably one of the only times I've been excited to talk about the social complexities thing. <laughs> I just feel like it's worth noting because there can be, um, you know, different things that can trip up different people. But usually it's a bit of like a warning. Uh, this time I get to say that like it's a positive, but I guess also kind of a warning. So Sonia comes from a poorer family neighborhood thing. She's actually orphaned. Her mother dies. Her father leaves her. She's in the care of her aunt and uncle. All of her friends are either orphans or only have one parent, and they're all very much struggling financially. Sometimes they even steal. Whereas the mages or magicians live in like the lap of luxury. They have all the nicest things, everything's provided for them. Rothen does point out that they do give back to the community. I picked up this book because it has a magical school which more so just seems as like a vehicle to kind of put all these people close together and why they would maybe interact with somebody that they don't love interacting with. But in a school kind of fashion is that sometimes they do public projects that help individuals, sometimes they do public projects that help the town, sometimes they just do research, which kind of furthers along technology and then can help out the town and sometimes even the whole world, depending on how earth shattering this new discovery is. I think I might have lost the plot a little. Um, what I liked about this a lot is that because they come from very different worlds, when they sit down together, Sonia is very distrustful. Uh, she's trying to be very careful about everything, like guarding all of her secrets and just trying to gather information without giving any. But the conversation that her and Rothen have about the kind of difference in classes that they both come from is very level-headed. Never are either of them yelling at each other or saying you just wouldn't get it. They're both very much trying to make their point understood while also being willing to listen to the other side, which I think is a fantastic way to approach different people having different mindsets other than your own. So maybe this book falls in more the adult category than YA. Uh, not because it gets inappropriate, but just because there's no focusing on like this flowery, lovey language. We do see a bit of a romantic kind of longing, affection, whatever you want to call it, from one character to another, but it is really just kind of used as a plot device. It gives them a reason to do a lot of the things that they do and kind of go above and beyond for this other person. They even have a confession where the one tells the other how much they love them or, or that they're pretty sure they love them and it still never gets mushy. 
They don't have a kiss scene. They don't talk about their feelings a lot, but it's still there and it could potentially make the characters happy later on, which is the way that I like to see romance used. But I think the, the two things that I want out of romance, if it is in a book, is I want it to not be the main point. I like how it's used as like a kind of plot device in here to, to give him motivation to do the things that he does. And the other one is that it makes the characters happy. And I think there's potential for that later on. He has his confession, but nothing else is said about it after that. So it could make them happy later on. So with it being a trilogy, I'm sure that they'll address it in the next book, but not land on anything. And then in the third book, they'll either get together or they'll decide that they're not going to get together. But I really like the way that romance was handled in this book. So I kind of also appreciate how violence was done in this book. I don't feel like there was very much of it. So the first violent act that I feel like we see is when the person gets injured uh, when Sonya finds out that she has magic. It more so just seems like he's stunned and falls over. Uh, I mean, later we find out that he has died. And so there is a bit of kind of mortality to contemplate in that, but there's no bloody mess. There's no blood. There's no outward acts of violence. He just kind of falls over. And I feel like this book only really kind of contains that sort of violence. Later, one of the characters is captured. While of course that is uncomfortable, disheartening, like it's just bad. <laughs> um, and you know, the act of maybe being like tied up or blindfolded or like shoved in the cell can elicit the same feelings as violence. He does get injured and trying to escape, he tries to stab his captor and it doesn't work out and he gets slammed into the wall. And so he gets hurt, but again, no signs of, no signs or talk of blood or anything like that. So the violence is really kept to a minimum. Oh, that's been kind of the last thing that I want to point out that is semi-violent, uh, is that we do see a character covered in blood and like that's terrifying, but we don't see the act that caused him to get bloody and that it isn't even talked about yet in this book. It seems like part of a larger mystery, so maybe it'll be addressed later but I have a little bit more of a delicate stomach when it comes to violence. And I'm thinking that by the way that Canavan addressed more violent things in this book, that even the second and third book won't get very bloody or very unsettling in relation to violence. All right, so as always my favorite part, uh, I get to share my opinions about this book. And I feel like this time I definitely let it bleed into the other categories. I feel like I said I like a lot, <laughs> um, but I like this book a lot. I think I said the same thing about Shadow and Bone, but it is a great example of what YA fantasy is slash can be. I think I do like this one a little bit more because there was less romance and less blood and the characters made a little bit more logical sense. Shadow and Bone is fine. I don't feel like they ever make any like strange moves that I wouldn't expect, but in here, they're even more level-headed than I would expect. You know, you do sometimes expect characters in media to exaggerate or act a little bit more dramatically than people would in real life, but not in this book. I really enjoyed the discourse between Sonya and Rothen about the differences and like kind of how much the upper class should be helping the lower class. Because like he even brings up, and I think it's the one thing that I did put a sticky note next to. I used the oh shit thing. <laughs> but they're both just uh, thinking and sharing their thoughts on that. And I, I really like seeing that. I love when two people can have different opinions and have a level-headed discourse about the positives and negatives of both sides. Maybe both people in this argument have a, oh, I didn't think of that kind of thing. I think it's nice to see when people can say, well, I still believe what I believe. Um, but you do have a good point. And you know, maybe that's something I haven't thought of before. So it was really nice to see that in the characters in this book. Plot also moved along really well. I kept wanting to read another chapter, another chapter. I guess that's one thing this one didn't do quite as well as Shadow and Bone. That one I read in three days and just like kept looking for excuses to go sit down and read more. This one, while I enjoyed it a lot, I was a little more willing to like stop and play games or go do laundry or something like that. But I mean, overall, I super love this book. All right, so just kind of in closing, I wanna give my too long didn't watch summary, which is that I think this is another really great example of what a YA book is and or can be. Uh, I like that there were minimal amounts of violence and romance. I'd be ready to put down a book if it's not handled properly. And it was handled in a way that I really enjoyed. Also, I loved how logical the characters were. 
they were probably more level-headed than real people. <laughs> but I really appreciate that after reading a lot of YA where the characters are a little over dramatic and sometimes can get upset when you don't really feel like they should or if they just calmed down and had an honest conversation, maybe things wouldn't be so bad. In here that never happens. They mostly have good like heart to hearts and honest moments and they're just like, let me just be honest with you about this thing. The plot went really well. Uh, it moved fast enough that I kept wanting to read more and more. And yeah, I mean, that's about all I can think of. It's just a really great read and I think it would be good for all audiences. Any kid who wants to read it should be able to, but I think it's also still engaging enough that adults would enjoy it. So I recommend it for everybody. <laughs> but yeah, that's it for uh, The Magician's Guild by Trudy Caravan. So I just wanna say, I think you should read this book. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.